Across Africa, crime feeds off new digital networks. Through cell phones, internet, electronic backing, criminals coordinate business and bypass borders. But digital data does leave evidence, and digital analytical skills can and do apprehend crime trends. Today, five African countries are turning the tide against crime, piloting a new model for prevention across the continent. In 2018, Interpol, through the ENACT project framework and funded by the European Union, began to pilot five crime intelligence analysis units in five African countries. Already, these units serve major strategic functions, empowering policymakers to contain emergent crime trends thanks to timely reports grounded in expert data analysis. For the production of each report, Interpol provides advice and resources. Interpol also provides equipment and analytical software. Most important of all has been Interpol's process for selecting and training analysts. Selection starts with 20 nominated officers, generally young but with at least five years police experience. During initial training, just five or six of the nominees are picked for the new unit. Each unit is deliberately small to ensure every analyst receives personal focus and builds skill upon skill. Interpol provides year upon year intensive training sessions, monthly mentoring meetings and consultation at all hours, seven days a week. Crucially, every analyst's contract builds sustainability by obliging them to remain within the unit and not transfer unless they have trained a replacement. This condition is signed off by each national police chief. Along with national strategic functions, the units offer services to police operations on the ground. As when Niger's unit analyzes over 1,500 phone calls and texts to pinpoint suspects in 23 cyber fraud cases, totaling 100,000 euros. Congo's unit, after a multi-million euro hacking attack on Congo Postal Bank, unearths intelligence leading to 18 arrests. Uganda's unit, tracing the kidnappers of an American tourist and a Ugandan guide, analyzes dozens of mobile phones to map the kidnappers' route and deliver 11 arrests. Malawi's unit follows up a human smuggling tragedy. Analyzing phone and bank accounts, the unit exposes criminal connections between Eastern and Southern Africa and provides a landmark report. Gabon's unit is the newest. Already it has begun to take Gabon's paper-based crime records into the future creating, for example, a digital framework for apprehending mobile money scams. Given the promising start of all five units, in five very different countries, what new insights can we offer for building crime intelligence capacity? One vital insight is that what matters is not so much the equipment as the unit members' talents, commitment and esprit de corps. Vital, too, is the ethos of service. The new units offer a menu of products and services that position other police and security departments as internal clients. Our geographical position puts us in a security threat situation. So, we have experienced a proliferation of specialized units and isolated security strategies. Now, the analytical unit is helping to consolidate a coordinated crime-fighting mechanism. The dream of an Africa more secure against organized crime is not yet won, but Africa's five new analytical units bring us five steps closer. With Interpol assistance, the units will gain autonomy, which is essential for sustainability and the future of criminal analysis in the countries. Supporting the creation of additional criminal analytical units in Africa is essential to allow such expertise to be integral to policing practice in Africa. The project has a long-term vision where today's efforts will have a long-lasting impact.